Could you imagine living where temperatures drop to minus 40 degrees? I am in Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia and the coldest capital in the world. And in this video, I want to find out what life is like when experiencing extreme cold temperatures. I've never felt anything like this before. It feels like my hand is literally getting numb in like a minute. This city has an annual average temperature of minus 1.3 degrees Celsius and temperatures in January are as low as minus 40. And can you see that? My eyelashes are about to freeze. There's literally ice on my eyelashes now. I am curious and intrigued to see Ulaanbaatar and witness the life of the locals under such extreme conditions. So my mission for today is to get first impressions of Mongolia, find out if I can handle the extreme cold and see what the daily life is like here during the winter. Let's find out. Feel free to join. I have just arrived in Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia. It is currently minus 24 degrees outside, which is going to be the coldest temperature I ever experienced. Landing here was also pretty interesting. Everything outside is covered with snow and ice. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Whew, arriving for the first time in a new country is always very exciting and I can feel the cold already here. And I am in the country and that was pretty easy and smooth. I can stay visa free for 30 days as expected. And then yeah, the airport is actually quite far away from the city Ulaanbaatar. It should be about one hour. Because of all my bag. All right, here we go. But first I need cash. I need a SIM card. And then we figure out how to get to the city center. And this looks like ATM to me. Let's just go with this one. How much money should we get? They have pretty high notes here. So I think I'm going to take 500,000 and that should be about 140 US dollar. And here it is. This is the local currency in Mongolia. So this, for example, is 20,000 here. We have Genghis Khan. Probably the one person from Mongolia that every one of you knows on the note here. Okay, now the next thing I need is a SIM card. First thing I noticed here, the, the writing here is Cyrillic writing. And this is actually the first time I think I'm in a country where I write like that. Let's see if I can get a SIM card here. This is a 20 GB. Do you, do you have a... Do you, no, I don't need call, just internet. Internet? Yeah. Do you have option with unlimited data? Limit data, yes. You have no limit? Limit, yes. No problem. Oh, so uh, that's the biggest one you had? Uh -huh. uh, 20? 20 GB data. And this is 40,000? 40, 40,000. Okay. Let me double check how much 40,000 is. That is about 12 US dollar. Okay, looks like also here in Mongolia you have to register the SIM card with a passport. Which I can't remember the last time I was in a country where that was not the case. So that seems to be pretty normal everywhere now. Okay, we have cash, we have a SIM card, we are connected to the world. The next step is... Uh, how much is a taxi? 80,000. 80,000? Yeah. This taxi is 100,000, me 80. Why, why are you cheaper? Uh, yeah, I'm in a long time here. And to the city center, Ulaanbaatar? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Actually, I just spoke with a, with a guy who approached me on the, on the line while we were waiting. And I asked him, uh, what is a regular price from here to the city center? And he said about 120,000. So he's offering me 80,000 now. So it sounds actually like a good deal. Oh, but now the first time experiencing the cold here in Mongolia. Let's go outside, minus 24 degrees. How does it feel? <coughs> oh, it is so cold it makes me cough right away. Who is a strange feeling in your, in your lung when you breathe it in? Because it feels super cold. Oh wow, this is... <laughs> Interesting. This is not cold for you? Yes. Cold? No cold. No cold? Yeah. Normal for you? Yes. Ah, for me this is very cold. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, of course I have gloves, I have my hat, I have several layers that I can potentially wear, but I thought, oh, now for the five minute walk to the taxi it should be okay. Oh, the first thing I see here is a nice German car, Mercedes Benz. You're parking second row? Yeah. No problem? Well. <laughs> ah, he's uh, blocking the cars here. Oh, maybe you can hold? And then I Okay, before we go, one picture for Instagram. Yeah, feel free to follow me on Instagram as well, Ken Abroad. Maybe you can help me reach 25,000 followers there. You drive on the left side here? Yeah, it's a from Japanese car. Japanese car? Yeah, German, uh, Russian, Korea is left side. So you have different cars here? Yeah. Some are on the right, some are on the left? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Are you from Ulaanbaatar? I born in West Mongolia. West Mongolia is my place. Full daddy. Colder than here? Yeah, this time oh. now. 
minus uh, 45. Minus 45. Yeah. Where do you like more, Ulaanbaatar or West Mongolia? Just now I live in Ulaanbaatar. I like in countryside. You like the countryside? Yeah. More beautiful. Yes. More peaceful. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Mongolia is actually the least densely populated country in the world, with about only two people per square kilometer. And in total, there are close to four million people living in Mongolia, and about half of the population is living in the capital. All right, we have arrived. We are now right in the city center of Ulaanbaatar. And yeah, first impressions here of the city makes me really uh, curious to explore around which we are going to do later in today's video it's a uh, 100 that's okay for you thank you okay thank you very much have a good day yes okay bye bye oh, he was a very nice guy and i think he gave me a very fair price 80,000. so i have no problem with tipping him and yeah he gave me actually many information during the ride we had a lot of time to chat a little bit okay the plan is now let's check in into the room I will show you the room quickly and then I'm actually hungry so maybe we're going out to explore a little bit around and get some food, get some first impressions. Let's see what a hotel in Mongolia is like. Oh, I think I am very happy here. Check it out. I have a kind of a kitchen area here but uh, yeah, no facilities to cook. Just a kettle here, a little sink, lots of glasses, some bowls and then a nice welcoming area here, a big table actually which I like. There's also a proper desk, a TV here, a couch area. Yeah, I booked a bigger room on purpose because yeah, I'm just coming from China. I have a lot of videos from China to edit in the next days. And yeah, when I'm uh, busy with editing, I prefer to have yeah, like a proper big room where I have a proper desk. So that's why I booked a bigger room this time. And then we have the sleeping room here. The bed actually looks quite cozy. Let me quickly check the view from here. Oh, there's a building down there called Frankfurter Pub. Frankfurt, the German town. Oh, maybe that's a German pub down there. Interesting. And yeah, I'm paying here 75 US dollar per day, including breakfast. And this is the bathroom right here. And then the rest looks like this, even a bathtub here. But yeah, let's go outside, get some food and some first impressions. And I am now at the main square here in Ulaanbaatar. And the man behind me is probably the only Mongol that most of you know. This is Genghis Khan, one of the greatest conquerors of all times. And yeah, he is the most famous person from Mongolia and probably can be seen all around the country. So I am curious how many times we will come across him while being here in Mongolia. And yeah, this is the main square here in the city. And yeah, the sun is shining, but don't let that fool you. It is freezing cold here. Where are you from? China. From China? Yes. Oh, ni hao. Oh, ni hao. <laughs> I'm just coming from China. Oh, you want a picture? Okay. All right, let me take a picture for the Chinese tourists here. Good? Okay. Okay. Have a good day. Both of them. Hello, hello. Nice to meet you. Hey, hey. Ah. Where are you from? I'm from Germany. Germany. Germany, yeah. Yeah, very, Germany. Very get far away. Mongolia, get one, get one. You're from Mongolia. Oh, Mongolia. Ah, okay, okay. Nice okay, to meet you. Okay, thank you, thank you. What's your name? My name is Ken. Ken, Ken. In Borch. Borch, Borch, Borch. Mokhe. Tell you good day. Over there. I don't really understand. Oh, in Borch, 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 Borch. In Borch. Borch. What is Borch? Ah, Borch. Mokhe. Ah, I think he's talking about the, the yeah, statues on the side. What is this building? Is this a museum? Oh, seems like he doesn't understand me neither. <laughs> but friendly guy. Good first impressions here. If any one of you can uh, speak uh, the local language here, please uh, translate in the comment section. I'm always curious to find out what the local people are talking. Yeah, we have ice sculptures here as well. This is all, this is not fake plastic or something. This is, oh yeah, this is solid ice here. Okay, I want to go to the biggest market in Ulaanbaatar and I would like to take a bus to go there. So let's see if I can figure out how to take a local bus. There's a bus station right here. And yeah, Google Maps seems to be quite helpful here uh, because I entered my destination and then it shows me which bus line I can take. And this is bus number 451 and apparently it comes every five minutes. This seems to be number 48, which is not the right bus. And yeah, standing here in the cold is extremely uh, difficult. I'm standing here for three minutes now and it's absolutely freezing. Whenever you have to stand still somewhere here, it becomes very uncomfortable after like two, three minutes. But if you're moving around, it actually is handable or more handable than just standing here. Okay, we have 451 here. That's the bus I can take. 
Hello. How much I need to pay? Uh, to Dungi Gada Shopping Center? No pay? Can go? Okay. Looks like for some reason I don't have to pay. Maybe he just didn't speak English and wanted to avoid the conversation. Okay. First time taking a local bus in Mongolia. And the first impression here, it is definitely warmer inside here than it is outside, which is great. Okay, let me actually have a look at the map to see how long I have to go. I think it should be around 20 minutes. So this is the route. Oh, you can see how I'm shaking actually because it's so cold. Uh, always interesting to experience the everyday normal life here, taking a local bus, which is probably very normal for everyone around me, but very special for me. I'm getting a lot of looks here. But I'm used to that because I'm talking to a camera and I'm a foreigner. Oh, one of the guys behind me just offered me his seat, which is very kind, but uh, I let the girl sit. And we have music here now, which is copyrighted music, so I probably can't film that much here in the, in the bus now. It's very shaky here. I have to uh, hold tight actually to not fall down. I actually kind of like the music to be honest. I'm not sure if this is Mongolian music, but it sounds nice. To be honest, it gets a bit warm in here. I'm wearing several layers, ready to experience the cold outside, but in here it's actually pretty warm. Way too warm for what I'm wearing now. Yeah, it must be like, I don't know, like 40 degrees difference compared to the temperature outside. Outside we have less than minus 20, and here I guess it's probably around 20 degrees inside the bus. This is also an interesting seating area here. I think the, the wheel of the bus is underneath here. So if you have long legs like I have, then uh, sitting on the seat right next to me would be a bit difficult to be honest. Okay, am I on the right bus? Are we making a right turn now? I think we do actually. So it looks like I am on the right bus, which is good to know. And there should be one, two more stations now. So we started here basically in the center and now we're going a bit to the outskirts of Ulaanbaatar. Letting the old lady sitting here now. I don't really need a seat. And I think that the next station is actually the one where I have to get out already. Oh, looks like this is a popular bus station here. Oh, you can go first. Okay. Oh, looks like everyone is going out here. Almost everyone. <laughs> All right, that was about 20 minutes for free, unintentionally. I would have actually be curious to know how much this ride would have cost. I'm guessing it can't be that much. But uh, anyway, that was my first bus ride here in Ulaanbaatar. To be honest, the air inside the bus wasn't really the best because it was probably because it's full with people and I was dressed way too thick for the temperatures inside the bus. So it actually gets really warm and uncomfortable. So I'm actually glad that it was only 20 minutes. Oh, we have street markets here. Actually, uh, I want to buy new gloves on the market because I know already that these gloves are not thick enough. Check this out. They have IKEA here. Doesn't really look like an Ikea to me. Ikea? Oh, actually it is, I think. Oh, wow. Is this the smallest Ikea in the world? Huh. Oh, actually it looks like Ikea, right? <laughs> when I saw the sign from the outside, this little shop, I thought it must be something of a, of a fake shop or something. It looks like it is actually a, a small version of an Ikea. Whenever I am in a new town, in a new country, I always like to just walk around have a walk, just uh, feel the atmosphere, see what's going on, what are the people doing, witnessing the everyday normal life here. Today is, uh, what day is today? Uh, Wednesday. So this is a regular Wednesday afternoon, early afternoon. We do have some street vendors here selling mostly clothes and I'm not sure what this is. Hello, hello. Ah, this is fruit? Oh, I don't understand. <laughs> what is this? Is this uh, for eating? Ah, maybe uh, some kind of fruit that I've never seen before. How are you? <laughs> nice to meet you. Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm looking for the Narantul market. This way? And then left? Yeah? Okay, thank you. Thank you. It looks like I'm not the only one heading to the market. Behind me, that's the Narantul market, the most dangerous market in Mongolia, according to the Google reviews, because the reviews are full with warnings for pickpocketing. And also the staff at my hotel has warned me to come here, because this is apparently the pickpocketing center of Mongolia. But this is also the biggest market here in Ulaanbaatar, so I'm curious to have a look. And yeah, I really need warmer gloves than this one, so let's see what we can find here. From what I have heard and read, this is a market where you can buy literally everything. Clothes, kitchenware, household items. Oh, something seems to be very popular here. Oh, I think this is candy. Hello. Oh, I see candy here with the German flag on it. 
This is interesting. Check it out. So we have Chinese writing. We have the German flag here. Oh, but all of this is like, it's totally frozen, obviously. It's rock hard, hard like a rock. But seems to be very popular with the ladies here. Yeah, there's a huge market here. It reminds me about markets in Southeast Asia. You can literally get lost in here. And it seems to be mostly for clothes though. All types of clothing are being sold here. And can you see that? My eyelashes are about to freeze. There's literally ice on my eyelashes now. I think this is the first time I ever experienced this. Whew, feels weird. Like when you're clothing the ice, uh, it's, they almost get stuck, you know? Because the ice is like sticking to the skin. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, looks like they are removing the, the road here from the ice. Oh. Yeah, I guess they have to do that here almost every day, probably. Oh, check it out. This is all ice. There's literally a thick layer of ice here on the road, which is very slippery, actually. Uh, you can see it here a little bit. Check it out. So this is the thick layer of ice that is covering the whole road here. And since I left the bus, that's about half an hour ago now, and I feel like it's time to go inside somewhere and heat up again. It seems like you can't really stand the cold for more than half an hour, at least not how I am dressed. And I'm wearing several layers already, including long underwear underneath my, oh, including long underwear underneath my pants. Okay, this is the first time that my legs are starting to hurt despite wearing long underwear. The past weeks when I was in Northeast China, for example, where it was almost as cold as here, I was always okay on my legs. But now I feel like it's hard to describe. It's like like needles uh, pushing into your leg, you know? So it's getting really uncomfortable, actually. I do have a lot of respect for the vendors here who are probably here all day in the cold. Many of them, especially the elder people I see, just sitting here. And yeah, imagine sitting here in this cold all day. I'm already freezing by just walking around here. So that must be a tough job. A lot of respect for that. Ah, these are actually probably a bit warmer than the ones I have now. Hello, do you speak English? I'm looking for gloves. Something like this would be actually good. Because I'm also leaving Ulaanbaatar in a few days, going to a remote area outside of the city where I need warm winter gloves. How much are they? Let's see if we can figure out what is she getting out of her shoes now? Oh, maybe she's getting a calculator out. 15,000 for these ones here. Oh yeah, this is a big difference. This is proper gloves. And I think they are fitting quite well. Not sure if I can bargain here, if you're supposed to bargain. 15,000? You can get me a discount? Cheaper? No discount? 15,000. Okay, looks like we can't bargain here. But uh, 15,000, that should be around $5. 10 more. 15, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, oh, that was an easy purchase. And yeah, what you can see from here is you can see the mountains in the background. So the whole area around the city is uh, mountains. So Ulaanbaatar is basically inside a valley here. That also leads to uh, pollution often. Just a few days ago, Ulaanbaatar was actually the sixth most polluted city in the world. And it doesn't really look like this because we have clear blue sky here and the air also doesn't feel polluted. It actually feels kind of fresh, probably because it's just freezing cold. Oh, there's a sign here, street food. What is being sold here? Oh, looks like they're having dumplings here. Oh, hello. hello. This is dumplings? What? Is it dumplings? Yeah, it's meat. Meat? meat. Pork? Yeah. Pork meat? Yeah, yeah. Okay, how much? 5,000. 5,000? Yeah. Okay, then please. Looks like a Chinese dumplings for me, which I heard um, they are also popular here. But maybe they taste a bit different here than the Chinese ones. Oh, check out all the steam that is coming out here. Ah, okay. Thank you. Whew, oh, this is hot. That is great. Okay, we got some chopsticks as well. And the change. Thank you. Problem is, once again, as soon as you take off your gloves, it's barely handable. So it looks like this also reminds me about uh, momos in uh, Nepal. Maybe some of you remember my Nepal videos where I tried lots of momos and they were always very delicious. Let's give it a try. It tastes more doughy. I think there's more dough than meat. So we have a small piece of meat inside, mm, but the flavor is delicious. Oh, it's very good. It's delicious. Thank you. But the good thing about it is it's just warm. It's almost hot, almost too hot to eat. 
but that feels very nice in temperatures like this. But actually the taste is overall very similar to the dumplings I tried in China before. But interesting to see that you can also find kind of street food here despite the cold. Great little snack. And they have these little uh, sweet houses here. You see that looks uh, very unique. Different uh, compared to the obviously compared to the street food you can find in Southeast Asia where there's usually just a lady or a man on the street grilling something that is obviously not going to happen here in the cold so they built these little houses here and there where you can grab a little snack okay i finished everything and what i also noticed now i uh, took off my mouth obviously to eat and wow also the face is freezing immediately it feels like my nose is about to to freeze you know so you definitely also need something to cover your face and yeah, I'm going to try more street food and a proper meal later in the video. But first, let's check out something else. Something that I always find very interesting when I am in a new country is to check out local supermarkets. See what products they have, see what prices they have. So let's have a look at a local supermarket here in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. Yeah, even in the English written here, supermarket. Very convenient for me. And coming from the freezing cold, minus 26 outside. Into a warm place is always something good. Oh, the first thing I see here is huge bottles of vodka. Vodka Gorbachev, vodka absolute. Oh, looks like they're like vodka here. <laughs> it's funny, that's literally the first thing you see when you enter the supermarket. <laughs> right straight into the alcohol section. Also lots of uh, beers here from around the world actually. I see Tiger here from Singapore, we have Heineken here. And then these brands are probably local beer brands, which I have never heard before. Altan Gobi. Yeah, the Gobi Desert is a part of Mongolia, so this is probably local Mongolian beer. 4,710 for half a liter here. Oh, and of course, Genghis Khan is here as well. Genghis Khan Gold Vodka for 36,150, the small bottle. Yeah, as expected, Genghis Khan will cross our pass more than once here in Mongolia. And then we have the coffee section. Many brands that I have seen before. Oh, this is interesting, Edeka Tee Filter. That is a German brand. Edeka is a German supermarket and they have their own brand. So this is very interesting to see here. Yeah, even the package is in German here. So this is a tea, German tea here. That is very interesting. And Jakobs, I'm actually not sure if Jakobs is also German. It's definitely very popular in German. Jakobs coffee. And then we have the regular Coca-Cola section, Fanta, Sprite, some uh, local soft drinks, I think. Soda water, watermelon. So the Coca-Cola, the small bottle for 1,350 and Sprite and Fanta is the same price. Oh, and I see something very interesting. Check this out. This is probably the biggest beer bottle I have ever seen and saying that as a German means something. Oh, wow. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, I can't read it, but I, yeah, it says beer, 4.8%. Wow, this is... I think 2.4 liter here. I remember I saw two liter beer bottles before in Eastern Europe, but this is 2.4. So this is the biggest beer bottle I ever saw. And then we have frozen meat here. This actually looks very delicious. Let's have a look. It looks like pork to me. Yeah, I can't read it. We have the Cyrillic writings here, but uh, yeah, this is probably pork. Oh, and the usual instant noodle section that you find everywhere in Asia, but no familiar brands here, I think. Oh, and this is interesting. Another German brand, Gut und Günstig, which means good and cheap. This is also a German brand from a German supermarket. Oh, this is actually very interesting. I definitely did not expect to see German brands in a supermarket in Mongolia. And yeah, the classical Axe, although this is a flavor I have never seen before. You can get it for 12,060 here. Oh, and we have noodles here. Also foreign brands here, Barilla brand. And this is maybe a local brand here. So you can get 500 gram for 5,410. And you can get cheaper noodles down here. Usually the cheaper stuff is uh, on the floor, or more towards the floor. So here you can get 500 gram for 2,190. And another German brand, Edeka once again. Edeka noodles. Oh, they have a milk brand here with a young lady on it. Very interesting marketing. But this milk, for example, here is one liter for 4,950. Again, more German brands here. Nordzucker, Brauner Zucker, which is brown sugar. Everything is written in German here. So this is literally just imported from Germany. That is very unexpected, seeing so many German brands here. Okay, we also have a bread section here where you can get bread. Once again, German, it says German bakery on here. 
in German, Deutsche Bäckerei. Oh, this actually looks like proper bread. Hard to find in Asia usually. Yeah, the bread in Germany is something that I actually really miss. But this actually looks very close to authentic original German bread. Oh, and Malaysia is also here. My favorite drink from Malaysia. 100 plus 2890. Okay, it's always a bit weird to walk out of a supermarket and not buy anything, right? So let me actually grab something, maybe a local drink. Okay, I'm going to get one of these local sodas here. Watermelon flavored sparkling water. Sounds interesting. Let's buy it and give it a try. What's interesting here, people also seem to uh, pay with their phones here. She was just uh, scanning with the phone. Same as in China, for example. But I do think that also many people here still use cash. But interesting to see that they also can pay with their phone here. Okay, and that was a Mongolian supermarket. Very interesting to see. Oh, the cold is still making me cough. Because if you really inhale the, the cold, it feels actually weird inside your lung. Okay, let's give it a try. Tastes very chemical, very fake, you know. Sparkling water with a slight fake tasting watermelon flavor. Oh, and check this out. They have telephone booths here. When was the last time you saw one of these? Oh, and it seems to be actually working. It is working. This is a working phone here on the streets. Oh, I remember they were, or places like this were everywhere in like the 90s in Germany. But I think we, we got rid of these places like 20 years ago in Germany. And they have traffic police here. There's one guy standing in the middle of the road regulating the traffic here. This is how the people protect their cars from the cold here. Ah, so the whole car is covered uh, underneath here. That is interesting. Yeah, I can imagine that uh, the cold is also very uh, difficult for the cars here. Like I remember when I was living in Germany and we had winters there and our German winters are nothing compared to the cold here. But uh, yeah, my car often was freezed in the morning. You have to like scrub the ice from the windows or sometimes even the door is like so frozen that you can't properly open it. So I can imagine all of this is also happening here and even worse because it's way colder here than in Germany where I grew up. I can feel that there's a little bit of ice already in the water. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me show it to you. So I need to like uh, the water that is Oh, you see how I'm shaking? Well, I'm holding the camera currently with my legs and this is how I'm shaking here because it's getting cold. But yeah, there are some water parts here on the outside that is already frozen. I can uh, taste the ice. Wow, this is like literally two minutes walk away from the supermarket. And by the way, these are traditional nomad tents, Mongolian nomad tents. Obviously, this is a very modern version of the traditional tents. Not sure what this is used for, but I'm actually going to stay in one of these tents in a few days. I'm going to leave Ulaanbaatar like an hour, an hour and a half away from here. And then I'm going to stay for a couple of days in one of these tents. So stay tuned for that video. And there's a KFC here as well. I think I remember reading though that there is no McDonald's here in Mongolia, one of the few countries in the world actually that don't have a single McDonald's but we do have KFC here and I also saw Pizza Hut in the mall and looks like I found a place to have food Korean egg bread looks almost like street food here let's see never tried this before in my life hello can I get one one of these this one oh it smells very good oh looks like a small bite in there okay I was just making it fresh there okay 2500 Oh, I just took off my gloves to get the money out and it is freezing cold. can barely feel my hands and this is just half a minute of taking my gloves off. Whew. Oh, this is... This, the cold is insane. If you have never felt cold like this, it is really hard to imagine. But uh, wow. Okay, how do I eat this now without freezing my hands off? Maybe I can sit here for... Oh, for a minute. Whew. Oh. Oh my, this is insane. I've, I've never felt anything like this before. It feels like my hand is literally getting numb in like a minute. Okay, but I am curious to try this now. Although I don't think this is local food because it says Korean on this store. Oh, this is warm. <laughs> nice to just touch it here. Okay, a little, yeah, it's like a dough with egg inside. It smells very good. It smells like it's something sweet actually, but I don't think it's going to be sweet. Almost like a, like a pancake, you know? Let's try it. Mm. Oh, the dough is sweet. 
and then we have the savory filling with the egg. Very nice combination actually. And also my my butt is now dying because I'm sitting here on the stone which is freezing cold. Oh, I can't stand sitting here anymore. Oh. Oh. This is very good though. I really like this. Even my gloves are feeling cold. Like it's insane. This is really, really insane. I thought, okay, these these gloves and overall my my clothes were fine in Harbin and it's gonna be fine here as well. But no, this feels way, way colder. Yeah, it is that cold for a few months here every year. So I would think that most of the people living here are actually kind of used to that. And probably they have warmer clothes than I have now. So they are better prepared for it. But yeah, living here every day in this cold, respect if you can handle that yeah so many things that you can do in warm countries you just can't do it here in the winter for example sitting in the park chatting with some friends here maybe having a drink impossible if you are outside you have to keep moving that is the only way you can handle the cold here as soon as i am just standing you maybe have a minute maybe two until it becomes unhandleable so i have to say this is actually a very interesting experience i actually kind of enjoy it to be honest because it's so different from what i'm used to huh. they seem to be very happy for some reason okay what is a good option to keep your body warm when you are feeling cold beer and i see a german flag there and it says nach dem deutschen reinheitsgebot which is german and translates basically they are brewing with German recipe here and they also have Mongolian food here. So let's check it out. Oh, and I'm just seeing myself in the mirror here. Oh, I didn't notice that my mask is looking right. And also my head, it's freezing here. Oh, interesting. Okay, time to warm up again. Oh, this looks beautiful with the sun here, right? Oh, wow. Whew. Oh, check it out. This looks like a brewery here. Oh, very interesting to see. I think they are brewing their own beers here. Five beef noodles. Five beef noodles? Is it spicy? No. No spicy? No. Okay, then I would like to get this. What is the, the best beer here? Mm. What is the, the number Weizen one? Weizen and Lager. Weizen and Lager? That's 100% Pilsner. 100% Pilsner? Yeah. Okay, I'm taking this one, the, the small one. Small one. Okay. Yes, please. So we have the Mongolian flag here and then also the German one. Mongolian beer, nach dem deutschen Reinheitsgebot, Ulaanbaatar 2003. You know, usually you drink beer when it's warm weather to refresh yourself, to cool down. And now having a cold beer, when I'm just coming from the freezing cold outside, feels a bit new to me, but I'm curious to try. Cheers, or as we say in German, Prost. Oh, this is very good beer. Oh, I definitely can approve this as a German. Oh, there's a light, sweet note to it, which I really like. It doesn't taste too strong, if you know what I mean. But still, you can taste it's an original Pilsner beer. Okay, and the noodles have arrived. And the first impression is they look very delicious. So it's beef in here, beef noodles, some carrots, and then a little coleslaw salad on the side. Okay, first time eating Mongolian food. Usually, you can't go wrong with beef noodles, right? Should be delicious, so I'm really looking forward to this. Let's give it a try. The noodles are a bit tough, like uh, chewy. You can feel it's not cooked for a long time, but maybe it's supposed to be like this. And definitely a different flavor compared to a lot of the noodle dishes you can get in China, where I have been previously, or in Southeast Asia. And they are a little bit dry though, which I don't think is a bad thing, but I know many people don't like the noodles to be too dry. So it's not really oily. You see there's no sauce, no soy sauce, for example. I would say this is a delicious portion of dry beef noodles. I like it. If you are watching this and you are from Mongolia, let me know how popular this dish actually is. Is this one of the most popular noodle dishes here or not? I'm curious to know. Simple noodle dish, simple but delicious. So good first impression of the local food here. Okay, I paid 30,000 for the noodles and the beer. And yeah, it is about to get dark now, which means it's also going to get even colder. And yeah, I think if you are living here, what you have to do is to plan your day like this, that you maximum spend like 30, 45 minutes outside. And then you have to be somewhere inside to get warm again. But yeah, to be honest, although it is freezing cold here, I kind of enjoy it. It's a very unique and interesting experience, something that I've never experienced before. And also I haven't seen another foreigner, other tourists here all day. So it 
feels like here, something unique being here. I don't think that Mongolia sees a lot of tourists during winter. And if you haven't seen my previous video where I was still in China, then feel free to check out the video right here. Stay healthy, stay positive and then see you on the next episode. Ciao guys!